notes that access to capital has proven to be a major constraint. As you know, it's always been the case, even in the pre-crisis times, that one of the greatest complaints or the most important uh, constraints to uh, business growth and activity and additional investment across sectors and across disciplines has been the access to reasonable uh, costs uh, finance. Of course, that has been exacerbated, as a colleague from the IDB has said, because of the financial crisis that has gotten even tighter as banks and other financial institutions, of course, um, escalate their risk surveillance and, of course, act for heavier uh, risk premiums on loans. While admitting government approached the IDB on the idea, he noted that the mechanism is in keeping with government's strategy for sustainable growth in a transparent and flexible manner. Mr. Sinclair says the Central Bank of Barbados has successfully managed several schemes before of the size of $70 million, and he's confident that it will do so again. Allowing an additional uh, mechanism with the necessary flexibilities uh, that will be required to allow those businesses to access uh, this. Of course, the central bank uh, has been, uh, you know, around with us for many, many years, has demonstrated its supreme capacity in managing these types of facilities. They have a number of schemes already that they manage and do so quite successfully. Meantime, Central Bank Governor Dr. Delal Burrell says a trust deed between government and the bank signals a substantial increase in its resources to support lending institutions. He says even though banks are full of money, there are not many available instruments for small and medium-sized enterprises. The facility we sign off on today is one of several initiatives in our ongoing efforts to improve access to finance. In the Global Competitiveness Report, 15% of respondents indicated that access to finance was a problematic factor for doing business in Barbados. This means that the problem is not universal. Of every seven respondents, six reported that they had no problem. However, the firms experiencing problems are often those on the frontier in sectors that are priority for the growth and diversification of our economy. Meanwhile, Acting Director of the Foreign Exchange Department of the Central Bank of Barbados, Ian Colomore, says the facility will be financed by the Inter-American Development Bank and the China Financing Fund for Latin America. He says businesses with annual sales or assets of up to $20 million and less than 200 employees can access that facility. A wide range of sectors and activities are allowed. Sectors include agriculture, commerce, industry, and services, while the activities are permitted for purchases of land and buildings, equipment, machinery, expansion and improvement of infrastructure, new technology, and the development of new techniques and processes. Guarantees are provided for loans up to $2 million dollars per project. However, a business can have total loans of up to $6 million guaranteed under the program. Mr. Colomore says the demand for the scheme has been mixed, but he is optimistic that the fund will be tapped. He says the maximum term for any credit is 10 years and the guarantee cover is about 80%. In traditional guarantees, if you're talking about 80% coverage, if there's a loss, the financial intermediary loses, if, the, if it's 80%, the financial intermediary loses 20% and the guarantee fund will lose the 80%. Under this, under this facility, once the loss does not exceed 80%, the financial intermediary does not experience any loss. 
Mr. Colomar says all commercial banks, Globe Finance, Consolidated Finance, Capital Finance, Signia Financial and Citicor are eligible to take part in that scheme. Well, you would think that given the recent increase in firearm crime, that shooting deaths would account for most murders. But it seems that other forms of killings are outweighing gun deaths. And these were among the findings of the just released updated homicide study released by the Criminal Justice Research and Planning Unit. They were released by Senior Research Officer Kim Ramsey. Half of all murders were with a gun, uh, 42%. The pie chart shows that four in ten murders was a result of approximately four in ten homicides occurred as a result of guns. On the other hand, 29% were due to knives, 7% were a result of blunt objects, 5% arson, 4% were caused by strangulation, 3% via a cutlass, 2% of homicide victims were beaten, and 2% the method was unknown. And the Royal Barbados Police Force was also praised for its speediness in solving 95% of murders. Ms. Ramsey says the easy access to firearms is a cause for concern. And she wants proactive measures taken to address to arrest the problem of violence. Ms. Ramsey says violence prevention programs must be strengthened. And she wants to see programs targeting at-risk communities and the boys on the block. These programs can address the psychological issues that are typical of violence like anger management. We find that a lot of our young people are very, they're, they're very angry. They do not know how to channel their anger and they resort to violence quickly. So you do need to have programs to address anger, conflict resolution, and life coping skills. And the literature has shown that effective programs utilize former gang and gun associated persons in violence reduction programs. And authorities will be using that report to assist in policy decisions. That's according to director of the unit, Cheryl Willoughby. It is important that not only Barbados, but the region move towards evidence-based decision making. No longer can we anecdotally determine that we need a particular policy or legislation in order to address any problem that we are seeing, whether it's crime, whether it's health, whatever the situation, we need evidence. And we can only get that through rigorous research conducted on a regular and sustained basis. Ms. Willoughby says the unit expects to undertake more work through the recently set up crime observatory. As we develop the Barbados Crime Observatory, because it's in its infancy stage right now, we be able to do a lot more in terms of criminal logical research. Right now, it is limited because we have to rely on the data coming from police in order for us to conduct our research. Well, the man charged with fighting crime in Barbados has died. Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police responsible for crime, Mark Thompson, passed away last night. He was just 53 years old. He died in Columbia, where he had undergone surgery for a heart condition. Mr. Thompson, a 30-year veteran, rose through the ranks of the force over the years, holding several key positions. His father, Lionel Dick Thompson, also a career officer, died just a few months ago. Mr. Thompson is survived by his wife, two children, and a sister, Sonia Thompson, our colleague here at the CBC. And to Sonia and the Thompson family, we wish to extend sincerest condolences. And the Royal Barbados Police Force is expressing sadness at the untimely passing of Acting as Commissioner of Police, Mark Thompson. In a release, the RBPF extended deepest and heartfelt sympathy to the wife, children, and extended family of the late assistant commissioner. More news after the break, but before we get to that, we want to hear from you on this question. Should lawmakers revisit the penalties for firearm offenses in the new year? Text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll have the results for you at the end of the news.
chance to win it in a minute with Double Draw. Two lucky Double Draw players will be chosen to compete during the 653 Double Draw show. You could win $550 in cash and fantastic prizes. Enter today. You can make deposits, transfer funds, and withdraw cash at any of Scotiabank's convenient ATMs. We never take a break from serving you. Scotiabank, discover what's possible. Well, there are incentives offered by the Cultural Industries Development Act and creative Barbadians should take advantage of them. The advice from Culture Minister Stephen Lashley as he addressed the NIFCA Visual Arts opening. Minister Lashley is excited about the quality of the exhibits and believes there is room for greater development. The act, which was proclaimed in February of this year, seeks to facilitate and encourage the sustainable growth and development of cultural industries, funding for cultural projects, duty-free concessions and income tax benefits. The incentives under the Culture Industries Development Act have been made available to you to expand the impact of our nation's creatives on the economic development sphere of Barbados. It is quite obvious to me that Barbados is not lacking in creativity and with the relevant investment, with the relevant promotion of our arts, we can indeed take Barbados forward collectively. Well, Barbados has signaled its commitment to all the principles of UNESCO and the Declaration on a New Education 2030 Agenda. It came as Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, June Chandler, addressed the recent opening of the 38th session UNESCO General Conference. Ms. Chandler told the world body that Barbados also recognizes the importance science, technology and innovation plays in sustainable development. Ms. Chandler says preserving and accessing information and documentary heritage continue to be priorities for the island. She added that no development can be sustainable without a strong cultural component. A visiting behavioral scientist is pleased with the effort being made to encourage people to make better health-related choices. That assessment comes from Dr. Cheryl Jones, who works with the Caribbean Public Health Agency, or CARFA. She says there's already a strong momentum with several initiatives in place to encourage behavior change in areas like chronic non-communicable diseases, HIV, and other sexually transmitted infections. That's one of the first steps, is to have a committed cadre of individuals who are open to change, open to looking at things differently. Um, so in my assessment, I saw a lot of initiatives that, though they may not have been evaluated, and we can't show specific numbers that say they're successful, but I know the commitment is there, and I see the initiatives have been running over years. Um, so I think that's the beginning. I think that's what's important. I, and I find that Barbados is progressive in that manner. Dr. Jones is in Barbados for a two-day meeting to develop the island's leg of a regional behavioral sciences agenda. She has been meeting with stakeholders, including the Health Promotion Unit from the Ministry of Health, representatives from the Diabetes Association and the Barbados Association of Retired Persons. That shift from medical, from treatment to prevention, and then treatment, I think that's going to be important. And I see, um, when I say that I see Barbados as having a, more, a relatively progressive health promotion um, unit, that's what I mean. I can see that um, resources, not just financial resources, but human resources will need to be shifted into, into health promotion. So. We need to focus on behavior change. Um, we need to focus on behavior change, whether it's at the policy level, whether it's at the institutional level, um, whether it's at the population or individual level. And still to come, a look at some of the stories making headlines across our region. But first, we want to hear from you on this question. Should lawmakers revisit the penalties for firearm offenses in the new year? You can text yes or no to short code 8111. We'll have